The news at 530 starts right now. Good evening. Today marks two months since the mass shooting at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde. It is a day that has forever changed the lives of an entire community with ripple effects throughout the nation. That day, 19 children and two teachers were killed inside of their classroom. Since that tragic day, community members have rallied together to show support for the victims and survivors of the shooting. On this somber two month anniversary, the lives lost are being immortalized in murals around Uvalde. Artists across Texas donating their time for the project Healing Uvalde 21 Portrait Murals. The project manager tells Lee Waldman they hope to help the community heal from this tragedy. This project has been underway for three weeks now. Over 50 artists from across the state working to complete these murals ahead of a dedication ceremony in August. Their murals are on several buildings across downtown Uvalde. Some have already been completed, like Eva Morales, Amory Joe Garza, Irma and Joe Garcia, and Uzziah Garcia. Others like Leila Salazar, Jose Flores, and Maite Rodriguez are still being worked on right now. Monica Maldonado, an artist out of Austin, is the project manager. She's been in Uvalde consistently working with families and carefully pairing each of the artists with the person they'll be painting. Really the children led us to the artist. And I say that because it was just very intentional and us wanting to make sure there was a connection between the child and the artist. We'll be introducing you to some of those artists tonight on the Night Beat, letting them explain how they're connected to the children or teachers. They'll also share the relationships they've formed with each of the families through this project. Back to you. Thank you, Lee. Today also marks one month since Roe v. Wade was overturned by the Supreme Court. This afternoon, a group held a march to show support for abortions rights. Uh, that march started around 11 o'clock this morning over at Hemisphere Park. There was also an education rally put on by the organizers. The goal was to teach people about local legislation to protect abortion seekers, Texas trigger bans, and how to support abortion seekers in Texas. We'll hear more from the organizer on today's march tonight on the Night Beat. A stabbing at a far north side apartment complex ends with a man in the hospital and a woman in custody. It happened around 1045 last night in the 11,200 block of Sir Winston Street. According to SAPD, officers found a 54-year-old man with stab wounds. The suspect, a 29-year-old woman, barricaded herself in a bedroom before officers arrived. SWAT eventually took her into custody without incident. The man was taken to a nearby hospital with life-threatening injuries. This is an ongoing investigation. Happening overnight, over a dozen families displaced following a fire that rapidly spread through an apartment complex near the medical center. Jonathan Coto has the latest. Today, 15 families are without a home. San Antonio Fire Department was called out close to 11 o'clock last night to a fire happening right here on the 8900 block of Data Point Drive, the Sierra Ridge Apartments. These men prefer not to speak on camera, but say the only clothes they have are the ones they are wearing. Everything they owned damaged in the fire. Fire officials say the fire started on the patio of one of these apartments. That fire quickly spreading up the wall and into the attic. Everyone was immediately evacuated from the apartment building. A total of six units destroyed by the flames and about 12 other units receiving smoke and water damage. Property management was on site assisting families. No injuries were reported. The cause of the fire is under investigation. Jonathan Corto, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio firefighters also battling another fire overnight, this one at a vacant building. The fire broke out around 1230 this morning in the 5500 block of Mountain Vista Drive. Crews had to break through a locked gate to get onto the property. We're also told the fire spread quickly throughout the building, causing extensive damage. The building is a complete loss. No injuries were reported, though. Arson is now investigating. Happening around Texas today, Lou, Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick announcing today he has tested positive for COVID-19. According to his office, Patrick is experiencing mild symptoms. He's also isolating at home and following all the protocols. Patrick is fully vaccinated and got his booster shot last fall. This is not his first bout with COVID. He previously tested positive about eight months ago. His office says he will be working from home this week. Now to the latest on the international monkeypox outbreak. U.S. health officials are continuing to assess the situation after the World Health Organization declared a public health emergency. According to the CDC, just two months ago, there were fewer than two dozen cases here in the U.S. Today, there are nearly 2,900 cases of monkeypox, including two children. The largest number of reported cases right now is in New York State. They're reporting at least 900 cases 
And in Bear County, we've seen seven cases. We are seeing uh, outbreaks that are out of control in many, many parts of the world. And it's very important uh, that we get our arms around this thing. A vaccine for monkeypox does exist. The U.S. has already ordered 5 million doses in anticipation of increased demand. They expect to have 7 million doses by the end of by mid-2023. Health officials believe that the vaccine, in combination with education and testing, will help slow the spread. Still ahead on the news at 5.30, the latest on that wildfire out in California, plus details on the dangerous heat wave now affecting more than 100 million people here in the U.S. That story after the break. Let's take a live look outside with live cam on this Sunday. Another hot one out there. Some clouds up there in the sky, not producing any rain, which is what we need. We did tease a story about uh, the heat wave continuing across the United States as well as the wildfires out in California. But right now we don't have access to that story, so we'll try to bring that to you a little bit later. Sarah? What I can tell you is that it's been hot across the United States. In fact, uh, New York City just had its longest heat wave in 10 years. Now the aquifer here in San Antonio is actually up three tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours. Not too much pumping over the weekend, so that's why we've seen that number go up. Molds are low at 440 today. Now, outside right now, it is still 100 degrees. Uh, coming up, I'm going to talk about how many days, as you can see, it's been since we've had rainfall in San Antonio, at least significant rain. It's been quite a long time since October was the last time we saw more than two inches of rain. And we just got a outlook for the month of August. I'll tell you what that looks like coming up in just a bit. Unfortunately, we won't be able to bring that story we teased yeah. about the heat, but Miss Sarah can tell us That's all about the heat. Yeah, it's not just can... hot here, it's everywhere. Yeah, and much. the the devastating thing is how dry it is mm -hmm. too yes. out there. You know, those grasses are, are so brown. And here's a look at how long it's been since we've had a half inch of rain, an inch of rain, and two inches of rain recorded at the San Antonio International Airport. Some of these numbers might come as a surprise or they may not. The last time we had more than half an inch of rain at the San Antonio International Airport in a 24 hour period was back toward the end of June. So that's been 27 days. The last time we had more than an inch of rain in a 24 hour period was all the way back in February. And if you remember that February morning, like I do, we also had a little bit of ice in the mix. So that's how long it's been since we've even seen an inch of rainfall reported at the airport over a 24 hour period. Even longer since we've seen more than two inches of rain reported all the way back last fall in October 285 days. Needless to say, this has been our driest start to a year ever on record and records go all the way back to 1885. Now the Climate Prediction Center just came out with its August temperature outlook and it's not good news for us. August is our hottest month and August is expected to be even hotter than average. Above average temperatures are likely around the San Antonio area with uh, and across the state of Texas, to be honest with you. And then on, on top of that, we expect below average precipitation from South Central Texas all the way down to the valley. Near average mounts out toward El Paso and up in the panhandle of Texas, but still it doesn't look good for rainfall and for temperatures for the month of August. Now, the one caveat to this would be if we get a tropical storm, a weaker tropical storm, perhaps in the right area to bring us some rain. But unfortunately, in the Atlantic right now, it's pretty quiet. There's no development expected over the next five days. Here's something to at least hope for, okay? We're right here. This is look at activity during the hurricane season in the Atlantic Basin. We're right about here. You can see that we really start to see the activity ramp up before it peaks in September. So over the coming weeks, we do expect for the Atlantic Ocean to start acting up again. Again, you know, we do not wish for a hurricane, right? But we do want a little bit of rain in the area. And the only rain chances we have over the next seven to 10 days 
are from Thursday to Saturday. Just a few stray showers and storms are going to be possible. The coverage may only be 10%, so it is not looking good, as I said, for rainfall, drought, denting rain around San Antonio. And we're going to be above average, too. Temperatures should be anywhere from 100 to 102 over the next seven days into next weekend. The average high this time of year is about 96, so we are going to be warmer than average, hotter than average. Status quo is what we're going to be following. 100 today for the high temperature, shy of the record by 4 degrees, but still a hot one out there. And this evening, you can expect it to become windy, gusts up to about 30 miles per hour from the southeast. It's going to be breezy and warm after the sun sets at 831. Temperatures will fall into the 80s. Pretty breezy and warm out there. Your KSAT 12-hour forecast for tomorrow in the morning, near 80 degrees and muggy with some clouds, but those clouds will quickly clear. And then and by noon, we'll be at 91 degrees right around lunch. So as you're taking your lunch tomorrow, it's going to be hot. Temperatures should climb up to 102 for the high temperature tomorrow, too, with winds picking up from the southeast during the second part of the day at about 15 miles per hour. But at this point, a southeast breeze just feels like a hair dryer. It really doesn't do too much to cool us down. Elsewhere in Uvalde, it'll be 102. Sorry, Creaser Springs. It's going to be 106 tomorrow out there, 102 in Del Rio, 97 in Kerrville, 95 in Rock Springs. Not too bad in the hill country, but still hot. 100 in Canyon Lake, 102 in New Braunfels, 101 in Seguin, 101 in Floresville, 103 in Divine, and 102 in Hondo. And over the next several days, this is what we've got. Uh, we're going to be near 100 every day, which is a 10% chance for a stray shower storm Thursday through Saturday. A lot of people have been asking me, Sarah, how does this drought and heat compare to 2011? We had a particularly bad drought and heat uh, back then, about uh, 11 years ago. I'm going to be talking about that very issue on the night beat tonight, so stick around for that. Very good question to be asking. That was a, that was a bad one. All right, thank you, Sarah. All right, Larry, we are finally making some progress on our long journey back to Sundays filled with football. Training camps kick off this week. Yes, training camps are kicking off. The Dallas Cowboys will report tomorrow to Auction Out, California for training camp, along with Greg Simmons and his crew. And coming up for running back Tony Pollard, this is his contract season. Plus, a Texans rookie is going to miss the entire season because of a tough diagnosis coming up. Football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys will start their quest to repeat as NFC East champs tomorrow when they report to training camp and weather wonderful Oxnard, California. This marks the contract year for the Cowboys eight man 2019 draft class, including defensive tackle Tristan Hill, running back Tony Pollard and safety Donovan Wilson. Pollard is looking to have a career season because he wants to get paid the big bucks. He's 25 years old and he has not seen 400 snaps in a season yet playing behind Ezekiel Elliott. Pollard is more explosive, fresher and younger than Zeke, who's now 27. The Cowboys plan to feature Pollard more this season with increased time in the backfield and reps from the slot. Out in Houston, Texans rookies report today and veterans must report by Wednesday. The team's first practice is scheduled for Friday. Unfortunately, rookie wide receiver John Mechie III will not be suiting up. The team released a statement from the rookie announcing he was diagnosed with acute permyelistic leukemia, considered the most curable form of leukemia. He says he's currently receiving great medical care, is in good spirits, and he expects to make a recovery at a later point in time. The Texans say he is out for the season. Mechie was drafted by the Texans in the second round and we wish him a speedy recovery. The Las Vegas Raiders kicked off training camp this week because they will open preseason play with the Jacksonville Jaguars in the Hall of Fame game. Second year safety Trayvon Merrick from Smithson Valley High School and TCU is drawing rave reviews after his awesome rookie campaign. NFL.com named Merrick a potential pro bowler this season, saying he could be one of the Raiders' biggest breakout players this season. That said, what does Trayvon want to improve on this season? To say that if there's one thing, you know, that'd be kind of silly. I think I can improve in every area, um, you know, whether that'd be, you know, just in coverage, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Just always wanting to improve. And check this out. Madden 23 listed its fastest players in Seattle Seahawks rookie cornerback Tariq Woolen is tied for third with a speed rating of 97. Tyreek Hill leads the way at 99. Woolen tweeted 97 speed on the next Madden. Best believe I'm using myself every game. He added the face with tears of joy emoji. Seattle reports to training camp on Tuesday. 
Turning to college football and Carnot Ward is the preseason favorite to finish second in the Southland Conference as voted on by each head coach and football sports information directors. Southeastern was voted number one. Cardinals first year head coach G.J. Kinney has taken over a team that loves to score points. He said for the most part he will keep things the same, but he will add his own offensive wrinkles. Stuff he's learned from all the great coaches he's worked under. Been very fortunate to be around some of the best, you know, play callers, offensive minds, the the game scene, and and uh, you know, so just taking a little, you know, bits and pieces of that, and, and like I said, uh, combining that um, with with what they've done here, it's been very successful, and and I've been a fan of Eric Morse for a long time. He re actually recruited my brother to Texas Tech, so we've had a relationship, and so he's helped with this process as well. So um, you know, I really appreciate him. Kenny will certainly appreciate wide receiver Taylor Grimes. Dude is coming off a monster junior season. He broke numerous school records and he led the FCS with 15 touchdown receptions. Injuries early on in his college career motivated him. At Illinois State, I was there for three years and I uh, kind of dealt with some injuries. But I think that kind of made me to the receiver. You know, I am today. It made me work harder, you know, through the rehab process because. I tore my ACL in my sophomore year, and that rehab process gets pretty tough. So, you know, going through that, uh, it made me tougher, maybe stronger. Grimes is a 2022 preseason all-conference first team selection. Wide receiver Chase Locke has transferred to the University of Wyoming. He graduated from O'Connor High School in 2019, then went to Southern California as a walk-on. He had a blast with the Trojans and living in SoCal, but said he needed a fresh start. We caught up with him this week while he was working out with his younger brother, Will, and OC quarterback Aiden Lotta. While there, Chase told us an elevated fact about Wyoming football. The elevation is no joke. It's the highest point in college football. Um, but, you know, there, there really isn't much to do in Laramie, and I honestly, that's something else that I like. There's really not much to do other than football and honestly play golf. Yeah, he needs to work on that golf game, I hear. Locke will join fellow 210 products, products Joshua Cobbs from Wagner and Micah Young from Southside High School. San Antonio FC was all smiles last night after beating El Paso Locomotive 1-0 on the road to win the club's first ever Copa Tejas. Santiago Patino scored the lone goal in the 48th minute. Give Justin Dillon the assist. Keeper Jordan Farr only had to make one save in his eighth clean sheet of the season. After the match, Dillon crashed Patino's post-game interview to talk about the game-winning goal. So like a couple minutes into the half, Santi comes over to me, he's like, bro, pass me, like, find me the ball and I promise I'll put it in the back of the net. And Sam did a great job to work really hard to get that second ball, plays a great ball in behind. And I see my boy Santi to the right of me and with this guy in the 18, you know what's happening, you know what I mean? SAFC will head to Las Vegas to play the Lights FC Wednesday night, 9.30 local time. And coming up tonight at 6, the XFL is holding a town hall in Arlington to officially announce the home cities and stadiums for the 2023 season. San Antonio is expected to land a franchise. We'll have this for you tonight on Instant Replay following the night beat and KSET.com. Any thoughts on names, Larry? You know what? I haven't had a chance to even think about that. Oh, we had a whole conversation before <laughs> you were even in here. We've got some names. Well, give us a name, Tim. Uh, I'm going to go with San Antonio Sizzlers for the heat. It's Ooh, so hot. Ooh, that would be good. Sarah likes yeah. salamanders for the blind salamander. <laughs> the blind salamander. salamander. <laughs> I'm going to vote for that one for sure. <laughs> we'll let you know, though, tonight. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Larry. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, coming up, we want to help answer any of the questions that you might have about, about vaccines. That's why our KSAT community partners are hosting a vaccine phone bank next week. It is Wednesday from 5 to 7. Medical professionals from University Health will be answering all your questions. We'll have the phone number to call on Wednesday. And right now on our website, we also want to hear from all of you. What questions do you have about sending your kids back to school? That's right, it's coming. It's right around the corner. Did the old school shopping with the kid the other day. And it can be anything, any questions you have from school safety to staffing to COVID, anything school related. Just let us know at KSAT.com. And you can find this story on the homepage. Not sure what we're going to do with all that information, but they need it, so we're promoting it. There I you can't go. We did a story yesterday on back to school, and mm -hmm. I was blown away. I cannot believe it. Summer went by really fast so this year. So fast, which is weird because it's sweltering, Sarah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you feel like it time yeah. goes really slow when it's this hot. Well, maybe just every day is blended. Yeah, that's probably what it is. It's like Groundhog Day. day. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, it's summer. Exactly. And we're going to do it again tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Temperatures are going to be 100 to 102 for the high temperatures. And as for rain, does not look good. Only a stray shower storm possible Thursday, Friday, Saturday of this upcoming week. Find a way to stay cool. I'll be by the pool on my weekend on Thursday and Friday. <laughs> we'll leave you alone then. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> That's all of our time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here for the night beat tonight at 10. Have a great evening.